We know whenever we do interventions, there's a risk of, uh, of uh, complications. And uh, uh, we had in this study, uh, from two to five years, some of the patients underwent cath ablation. And actually, uh, we had uh, one patient who died from a complication to cath ablation, uh, from an atrial esophageal fistula. We have to, to acknowledge that there is uh, there is a risk associated with doing these interventions and uh, it's very important that whenever you, you, you inform a patient about the different uh, uh, treatment possibilities or, or options, you, you, should, you should inform the patient what are the advantages of this treatment, what are the risks and the patient should be involved deeply into the decision on what, what, what to choose here. I think doctors can take from this that um, catheter ablation can be uh, considered as an option as first-line treatment for, for patients with highly symptomatic paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. But these patient, patients should be informed thoroughly about advantages and disadvantages before deciding and should be involved in that. I also think doctors can take that uh, that, that it is possible in many cases and most cases to, to avoid that these patients uh, progress to persistent AF. Uh, this must be the end for, 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 for this study. I think we had 300 patients and it made sense and still makes sense to, to, to follow these patients for a five-year period. Uh, not only to look within the first six months, that may be important, but what's important for the patients is the long-term outcome. This study was done in a period where we had uh, less advanced methods for, for ablation than we have today. Mm -hmm. Today we use, uh, we ensure in each case that we isolate the pulmonary veins. We didn't do it at that time mm -hmm. because that was not, was not standard at that point in time. Today we ensure contact with the catheter to the tissue mm -hmm. so that we can do a, or make a good lesion. We didn't do that. So I'm sure today that we, we do better procedures, mm -hmm. um, more efficient procedures but it has not been proven mm -hmm. in, a, in a trial. And still, although the, the risk of severe complications, it, it is still there, yeah. And we have to, to, to respect that. that. That is certainly a limitation, but by, by, by doing randomized controlled trials within this field where technology moves much faster than you can uh, make a trial. Um, on the other hand, what we believe most in when we should evaluate the efficacy of a new treatment is a randomized controlled trial and that's what we should believe in.